Welcome to this video where we're now going through our stepwise approach of airway management. We've already been ventilating using a bag valve and mask. We've put a nasal pharyngeal in and an oral pharyngeal in, but we want to up it again to a superglottic airway such as a IGIL. Well, whilst my colleagues are doing chest compressions, I will prepare all of my equipment. So I choose an eye gel according to the patient's weight and then I'm going to line all my equipment up next to me. So I get my eye gel ready, I might need some lubrication. The second thing I'm going to need after the eye gel is a clamp to hold it in, such as the Thomas Select clamp, so I get that ready. Because I'm using an AED, I'm then going to use a colour metric. Um, so that would be, an, obviously all of this would be new in packaging, but that goes next. Then I've got my catheter mount, so that lines up next. Um, and then finally, I've got my filter before my BVM. So I like to line everything up in order so you can get it ready to go in. Then when we're ready to change over, I'm going to ask my colleague to do continuous chest compressions. I'm going to take my eye gel out, lubricate it if required. And what I'm going to do is as the OPA comes out, remember it goes to the toes, then the eye gel comes in and slides down into position. Okay, so I'm just going to go through that again. Um, so we take the eye gel out, the OPA was in. As that comes out, the eye gel goes in. I then place all my clinical waste on one side. So you can see where I used my suction previously. I just put all my clinical waste in one place, ready to go. So now I've got my eye gel in and I've uh, got it in the right position. I'm now gonna test it. On this particular mannequin, this one does sit a little bit high up, but keep an eye on the bite block. So we've got the bite block and ideally the incisors are level with that uh, mark on there. But if you need to, you can just get a little bit of uh, deeper rotation to get that into about right. I'm now going to take off the mask. That goes in my clinical waist. I'm going to hold the eye gel in place, place the BVM on top of it, ask my colleague to stop chest compressions while I test it and I squeeze uh, about a third of the bag just to see if it's working. If I'm happy with it, I remove the bag valve and mask and I've just got the eye gel. I'm now gonna clamp this in place. So I use the Thomas Select. If you press the button on the top, the yellow bar comes out, get it open. Make sure the bite block here goes between the teeth. So use this window to watch it. Slide down the eye gel and go between the teeth. Get it as flat as you can. You can then clamp that in place. So the um, Thomas Selector's got this bar on it, which will come uh, through. We we'll just Velcro that down. Now the Thomas Selector's in the right place. I can hold the eye gel down to where I want it and screw the clamp in to hold everything in place. Now I've got that in place. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is put a color metric on top so I can see the color. Remember when these are new, they start purple. And if there's carbon dioxide, CO2 coming out, it will change to yellow. If I was using a monitor and I had waveform caponography, I wouldn't need this. But because I haven't got that, that's why I'm using um, a color metric device on this occasion. I'm then going to get my catheter mount, extend it, it's a flexible tube, place that onto the colour metric. I'm then going to place a filter onto that, and then my bag valve and mask goes on the filter. So um, if this was a monitor, I may well have my um, waveform caponography after the filter, before the BVM, and that would then go to my monitor. But as I said, we haven't got that on this occasion, so this is the setup I'm going to have, keeping all my clinical waste together. I'm now going to attempt a synchronous CPR. So while my colleague is doing chest compressions, I'm going to ventilate by squeezing the bag about a third once every six seconds. So one and two and three and four and five and squeeze. One and two and three and four and five and squeeze. 
So now my colleague can do continuous chest compressions for a full two minutes and I can do the ventilation once every six seconds. Again, every time the AED analyzes, we would all stop and reassess. When we shot previously, we needed to remove the oxygen up to a meter away from between the pads. But now I've got a closed circuit, I can leave all the oxygen running in place whilst I deliver that shock. I will see you in the next video.